a few classes ago, we talked about this XOR language. We could talk about the infinite XOR language, which is going to contain all strings of zeros and ones where that string has an odd number of ones. What I'd like for you to do is write a regular expression for the complement of that language. There's a few different notations you might have seen before for complement. You could kind of have this exponent of C for the set. That is one notation for complement, or you could have this over bar thing. The complement in this case means the set of all strings containing 0 or 1, except for the ones that are in XOR. Come up with a regular expression for the complement of this XOR language. So first of all, who can who can kind of more succinctly describe this language complement XOR? What kinds of strings belong to that language complement XOR? Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be strings with an even number of ones. So every string is going to have some number of ones in it. If that number of ones was odd, that language should be XOR. It should belong to XOR. So if we want everything that doesn't belong to XOR, we want the ones that had an even number of ones. How many agree that this works? How many think that this breaks for something? What do you think it breaks for? One, one, zero, one, one. Okay, so let's let's try it. Let's see. So when we look at one, one, zero, one, one, so we want to figure out is there some way I can first of all break it into two pieces so that the first piece matches zero star and then the second piece matches that. So we have a concatenation to, to figure out. Uh, with this regular expression, if it matches the string, we need to basically say break the string into two pieces so that we can do the concatenation over here. So can we break this string into two pieces such that the first piece matches zero star and the second piece matches this other thing? What would the first piece have to be in order for this to work? Certainly the only way we're going to have any hope of doing this is if the first chunk was the empty string. Because zero star, that says we can have zero or more zeros. Since this string started with a one, the only way for us to have matched zero star was if we chose to have no zeros at all. So the empty string is going to match zero star. So that must mean that one, one, zero, one, one has to match the rest, has to match this other thing. So the next thing we need to do is figure out, can I split this up into several pieces so that every single piece match the stuff in the parentheses. So I can break it into any number of pieces I would want so that every single piece matches the stuff in the parentheses. Can I do that? Yeah. How? What are my pieces? OK, so you'd like to break this into three pieces. So we're going to have 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. OK, so let's see if we can make 1, 1, 0 match the inside of the parentheses first. To do that, we need to match the 1, which we're good. And then we need to match zero star, which we can pick the empty string for that. So we're good on that. And then we need to match the other one. So we're good. And then we can choose to pick one zero. So we match that. So we matched all of the four pieces with one, one, zero. With one, one, we're going to match the one. So we're good. We have zero zeros. And then we're going to match the one and then zero zeros again. So one, one also matches the inside of the parentheses. So therefore, this whole string does indeed match as we wanted. So I believe that this regular expression does work. Some things to notice that I think are, are important to see when you're kind of trying to come up with these regular expressions. Here, we said that we wanted an even number of ones, which meant that I needed to make sure that I only ever added ones in pairs. So if we look at this regular expression, I add a one here, I add a one here, and those are both inside the star, so I can only ever add ones in pairs, which is how we maintain the fact that we have, say, an even number of ones in there. We also need to make sure that I can have zeros kind of arbitrarily intermixed with the ones. So we can see that maybe I've got uh, zeros before the ones, I have zeros between the ones, I have zeros after the ones. And since there's stars on those, I could skip the zeros if I wanted to, or I could have as many as I would like instead. Since I'm only ever producing an even number of ones, since they're being generated in pairs, and I can intermix zeros however I would like, that's what's going to make this represent the correct language. Okay, there are other things that could work here as well. Is the empty string in this language? 
Yes. How does the empty string match the regular expression? Who can answer that? How does the empty string match the regular expression? Yeah. Yeah, so I can match the empty string because I'm going to say something like, well, the empty string, I need to break that into two pieces. Those two pieces are going to be the empty string and the empty string. The empty string concatenated with the empty string, that's still the empty string. So that means I can sort of say the first piece is the empty string, the second piece is the empty string, and then that matches both of the zero star and the star on the parentheses, because in both situations I just chose zero copies. So the question was, does the empty set have an infinite number of empty sets inside it? Um, the empty set is empty, so it doesn't have anything inside it at all, but any number of unions of the empty set uh, is going to still just result in the empty set. Does that answer your question? Okay. 